Hi everybody, well we have just finished here with the latest conversation that we had all around the economy in the Northern Irish economy and also interest rates and a plethora of other things. So what I'm going to do now is share with you a summary of what we discussed. So I had three panellists to interview, uh, Connor Lamb, uh, John Paul Coleman and Shane O'Hanlon, all of which are tagged in this post. So let me take it from the top. So Connor started off by talking about the fact that the UK is indeed out of recession and there is now a return of economic growth of 0.6% in the first quarter. He also said there's been flat growth in the in the past month, or there hasn't been growth, that's what flat growth means. And also he said that inflation is coming closer to the 2% target that is driven by a decline in energy prices. He also talked about the fact that core inflation is now 3.9%, but services inflation is the one to watch at 5.9%. Then we went to John Paul, who then spoke about the fact that US growth has been higher than anticipated. And he said that the markets did get ahead of themselves in anticipation of cuts around the world, but particularly in the US. Then Shane spoke about the fact that we have to remember that inflation is still happening. It may be slowing, but it's still happening, which means prices are rising. And of course, wages are rising too. He said there's always a good time to be innovative. And I mentioned, of course, that necessity is the mother of innovation. And he pointed out that there are some of the best universities and colleges here in Northern Ireland. And also he spoke about the plethora of supports that are available for businesses to risk share with the government. Now, at this point, I thought it was important to bring up a topic that is often discussed at the moment, but I just wanted to delve into it a little bit more, and that is artificial intelligence. So there was a report out this week to say that uh, there, there, it's now expected that 40% of jobs would be affected by AI, and I think that is a dramatic underestimation. I think it'll be a lot higher than that. So I shared the couple of examples of how we're using AI it's in two areas. One is to make things more efficient and two is to do things that we couldn't do before. So in terms of making things more efficient, like we use it now to transcribe calls, we're using it to generate summaries, we ask it to draft text, we ask it to also come up with uh, some prompts to prompt critical thinking sessions, all that sort of thing. But then also things that we couldn't have done before. We ran a survey over the past two years with a lot of our teenagers at Savvy Teens. And I was presenting the summary of that research at the Careers Teachers Summit in Coolerain a couple of weeks ago. And we had 1,261 responses to that. And I ran it through AI, asked it to summarize it with the key points that would be most of interest to career teachers and make sure that it was unbiased. And, and it did. And from there, I was able to then uh, present that, that research. So it's really interesting, I think, where businesses are taking AI and specifically how I'm developing my AI literacy, if you want to call it that, is by going onto the webinars of the companies that we are buying their technology. So we use ClickUp, for example, for project management. They run a range of webinars around how to use AI, both in ClickUp and beyond. So that's what I'm doing to make the most of it. So then we moved on to looking further afield and Connor, first of all, he talked about the fact that the economy is indeed growing, but of course that presents then other challenges, particularly in terms of employment. He said there is a 4.4% unemployment rate in the UK and half of that is in, the, is in Northern Ireland at 2.2%. However, in Northern Ireland, there is a 27% rate of economic inactivity. They, those, these are people who are aged bet between 16 and 64 in the working age population, but are in part of the workforce. And that is a much higher percentage than in uh, the UK, where it's 22%. Now, he said it is a very tight market and it is expected to loosen. But he said two things that need to uh, be improved in Northern Ireland. And one is productivity. And the second one is also that economic inactivity as well. Then JP talked about that we all need to watch out for the number tomorrow. Uh, and that is the inflation results are coming out in the UK. He said that's going to make a really big influence on what happens next with the Monetary Policy Committee. And he says that markets are expecting two rate cuts to happen uh, in, in the next year. He also said the market is expecting a Labour government. And he said, the, in addition, it's expecting that the Labour government won't do anything radical, while we're seeing a lot of volatility in France, particularly around the polls there, pointing towards what could happen uh, in the French election on the 7th of July. He is expecting, he is expecting because the markets are expecting a uh, slightly weaker pound relative to the euro and, and uh, also for euro, uh, sorry, for the sterling dollar rate to be broadly speaking flat from where it is. Then we went back to Shane 
and Shane spoke about the fact that when Intertrade Ireland was set up, cross-border trade went from to, was at two billion. It's now at twelve billion, and the twenty twenty three figures are expected to be out shortly, and also expected to top that number. He said the companies that export cross-border or otherwise are more successful, have more econo have more growth, are more resilient, and have uh, higher profit margins. And then he talked about um, the fact that Intertrade Ireland have an export pathway and also he was talking about programmes like Acumen, etc. So at this point, I interjected again and I delved into the figures related to employment in Northern Ireland and just want to tell you a couple of things. First of all, there is a 71 participation rate and that is that of the of 100 people who could be participating in the workplace, we have uh, about 71 of them uh, who are choosing to do so. And when I say choosing, some people obviously uh, have other commitments and, and don't have necessarily a choice per se, but it's the other side of the economic figure that um, Connor had mentioned earlier. But when we actually look into that, right, first of all, the gender pay gap in Northern Ireland is 9%, if you don't look any deeper. But I did look deeper. And if you look at the gender pay gap between men and women in full-time positions, women actually out earn men, because they tend to be in more service related businesses and also are in more so likely to be in the public service. But when you take full time workers out of the equation, then we also see a very different picture. And that is because uh, there is 35 percent of employed women in Northern Ireland in part time positions versus uh, versus nine percent of men. And in addition as well, 11% of people employed in Northern Ireland are in lower paid jobs. And that is the lowest that it's ever been, but it's the joint highest in the UK. Also, uh, Northern Ireland is the tightest labour market of anywhere in the UK as well. So what do we take from that? A couple of things. Number one is that it means that the average, sorry, not the average, the median wage rate in the in the UK, in Northern Ireland, is currently at a level of 32,900, which is below the median of the broader UK. And that's down to a higher proportion of people who are um, employed in the lower wage sector. The second thing it points out is the opportunity for underemployment as well, is that there's a lot of women who are in part-time positions <clears throat> that potentially could work more hours if they so choose, and if, of course, it was economically worthwhile. So while we hear about the labour shortage in terms of the unemployment rate, there is underemployment also present. And then, of course, the third thing is, is that the higher wages are available. And it's just interesting, and particularly there was a great reaction in the room uh, from the women who were here uh, when I was mentioning about the, the, the gender pay gap in the opposite uh, direction. OK, then we went back to Connor. And um, he was talking about the fact that now that the Northern Irish executive has returned, the focus is on um, increasing productivity, promoting jobs, regional balance and cutting carbon emissions. And he was talking about the fact that the focus of government, independent of who gets in, is going to be on a strict set of fiscal rules around taxes and spending, which of course is what fiscal refers to, in an environment where monetary policy does seem to be to be remain relatively restrictive, even if we do have those interest rate cuts. And I questioned him on that and I said that flies in the face of promoting economic growth. But of course, the objective here is that the, uh, the Bank of England has to reduce inflation back to the rate uh, of its target of 2%. Three things that John Paul told us to watch out for, uh, that the markets are watching out for. Number one is the first budget. Again, independent of who gets in, will that party follow through on what it says it will do? The second thing are trade wars. And we were he was talking about the uh, trade tariffs that the EU has recently put on Chinese EVs, for example. And then the third thing, of course, is war in the Middle East. And then Shane finished by ta telling us that it's really important to embrace technology as businesses, be agile, operationally efficient, look after your staff, retain your talent, encourage them to take risk, continuously learn, be customer centric, and also to have honest conversations with your customers. And then I finished my final point around sustainability, and this picks up on the Chamber Conference that Chamber of Commerce, Belfast Chamber of Commerce Conference that I summarised recently he here as well. The potential for sustainability in Northern Ireland is immense, with 13,000 jobs potentially in Northern Ireland. Uh, currently, 48.3% of electricity is generated from renewables. The demand is expected to double, so there's a lot of potential here around expanding that. Um, also, uh, Belfast, uh, the Belfast Harbour is building uh, Harlander, which would be one of the first autonomous vehicles to happen in the UK and offering new public transport between Titanic and 1.3 miles into the city centre. 
and also as well TransLink is currently using hydrogen to power vehicles right across rural Northern Ireland now. Thank you so much to all the team at Danske Bank for another really interesting session.